Aloha, we're here today at 3660 on the rise with Chef Russell Sue. Hello, Russell. Hello. I think this is the first time you've actually prepared a meal specifically for me. What are we eating today? I have a signature New York steak, a la ale, and we have butter braised lobster with shiitake mushrooms. How's, how's everything been since uh, the pandemic? Rough. Rough. It's been, I guess, makes you want to think outside the box. Yeah. You can't think how we normally think when you run a restaurant. But because I had experience with Kakaako Kitchen for takeout, it kind of helped out quite a bit. Right, so you had that, you had Kakaako Kitchen, so you had, that was more of a takeout type of establishment. Takeout and catering. Takeout and catering. Mm -hmm. Should we um, sample this food? Sure. Okay. Serve it. You can have the rest. <laughs> so I know you um, have an affinity for wine. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what type of wine are we pairing this with today? This is a, this is a white burgundy, Chardonnay. It's a basically like a village wine for Pouline Montrachet. It's a base base wine. It's a Every base wine. wine. Okay, well, cheers. Thank you for doing the show. Okay. So you have been doing this for twenty eight years. The restaurant, yes. So what keeps you going? What what is how do you stay successful for 28 years? Great staff. Great staff. <clears throat> I have a great staff. I have a great crew been with me for over like 20 years or more. Mm -hmm. And I think we produce good quality, consistent food that people come back for all the time. We're not the high end, like avant garde kind of place. We try to keep things very simple or very tasty and let the food speak for itself. Mm -hmm. I think we have great service. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And just be consistent. Like, if you're, consist if you're bad, be consistently bad. So people know, I'm going there, I'm going to have bad food. If you're good one day and bad the next day, inconsistent, people are not going to go back. They don't know what to expect. So we try to keep a good consistency with our food. Well, you have, some, you have some staples on the menu that you have never taken off. And what are those items? New York steak. This is one alea, of them. Um, Our ahikatsu. Our Caesar salad. We had the catfish. We took it off because we were right at the Kakaako kitchen. A tempura catfish. Um, our Chinese steamed snapper, well, there's no snapper anymore, so it's Chinese steamed fish. Mm -hmm. And pretty much that's what's on the menu all the time. Yeah. And now, since we've been doing about butterfish, that's one of the best sellers. Mm -hmm. This location is very unique. I mean, your name, your, the, the, title, the title of your restaurant has the name or the, the address of the location, right. 3660 on the rise. At Wilhelmina Rise. Wilhelmina Rise. Right. Um, there's, it's actually a very well-used type of space because you have the main restaurant and you had cooking classes. You had so many amazing op opportunities for, for diners to be able to be engaged, whether they did parties here. Um, how do you see you using this space in the future? Pretty much the same, but we can't do the volume that we expect to do like we did before, like 200 people. Probably come back to 100. You have to be like six feet apart, everything, so much per table. And a lot of people now, I guess, for now, they're kind of like leery about going out, having a lot of people in hand. Even my friends, oh, let's, go, let's get together. How many people will be there? That's the first question they ask every time. How many people? Oh, it's too much people on the World Cup. That's everybody's first question. Yeah. So we show a call for banquets like that, they ask her, oh, I'll do a banquet, how big? Oh, 12, 20, but it doesn't go past 50 or 60 because no one wants to get together. What else, what, what else have you learned during this journey that you can share, especially with what's happening now? If I knew now what I, if I knew what, when I first opened up, I'd be, wow, so much happy, I would sell it. <laughs> no, 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 I'm only kidding. What I would do, what I learned is basically you have to take your employees and you treat the employees how you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that everything's fair. And what you sell, you have to make sure that you, whatever you charge, the food will back up the price. The quality is there for the price. And you don't rip people off because people remember all these things. Mm -hmm. And you don't make, make any enemies. You treat everybody the same no matter what. But you cannot judge a person by how they look or how they dress. So we talked, I mean, I talked with Alan about this and there was a continental cuisine that was consistent in Hawaii. Right. And then when the Hawaii regional chefs came together, 
it was elevating the cuisine to the next level, incorporating local, incorporating all of the different cultures into the restaurant or right. into the dishes. Right. What do you think is going to be the next fad, or not fad, but next kind of cuisine that is going to be elevated? It's hard to say because, like, I think the mainland people, people talking, like, people, everything goes in a circle, like a cycle. I think it's coming back to local food, good food, but presented in a very simple way where the food, where the protein or things on the plate shine. And the culinary world goes in a cycle, I think. That's my, my own opinion. I think in the future, I think people are seeing things more as, as it is. If you buy a steak, it's going to taste like a steak. They're not going to make it, but it's not going to taste like a steak. You know what I mean? By putting yeah. so much sauce, everything like that. You want the product to stand, stand out. Using more natural organic parks in the area, pretty much, that's it. And so pretty much I think just using basic products from, from where you live and building food from that, I think it's, it's the next step, I think. And people now look more to the, the own root, their own roots. Like if it's Korean, more Korean but modified version, Japanese, Thai, it's all been modified to more modern cuisine, but still featuring the food as, as a main draw. So tell me about the preparation of this lobster is amazing. It's really, really good. Tell it's how you it's butter braised. I, I first I reduce white wine, shallots, and I put all the lobster shells inside, and I reduced it down. Then I finish it off with butter. Then I put the lobster in it, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Now what about this amazing? I can't tell you the recipe for steak. This is a signature steak. Can't tell you. It's just well seasoned and it's sautéed with butter. So you can't share the recipe. Can't see the recipe. Everybody's going to do it. <laughs> so do you season the, the onion, the fried onions? No, onions are slightly floured and fried to crispy. And this is on your menu? This is on our menu. Okay. And we can't take that off. People love the steak. This is, it's very good. Thank you. So can you tell me a little bit about this pinot that you just poured for me? It's on from Jay. And Jay's have you no know, Jay, Jay sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. so you can't call it champagne because not made in champagne. So Jay sparkling wine. They also made Pinot, and they made a Chardonnay, and they make a Pinot Grigio. But then, that was a daughter of I can't tell the name of the winery, but she sold the whole thing off already. So she made her money, and they produce pretty good Pinot. They have this, and also the Nickel Vineyards. That's really nice. You're saying that the the footprint of the vineyards are changing. Right, because not the, um, the winery is pretty much they're constantly moving distributors. I see. So this would be with Jay used to be with um, Chambers, now it's with Johnson Brothers, and a lot of wines because Paradise shut their wine division, so all the wines went to different p distributors, and everything depends upon the mainland. So if the mainland, says, if Youngs in the mainland say, I want this, 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 and wine, then get, if you want to do this, then I want Hawaii too, so they change that way too. And so sometimes you don't, you really can't tell who you buy from sometimes. So it's the purchase power of the mainland too. So it depends like how much power they have in the mainland. Like Southern has a lot of power. Because mm -hmm. they tell the winery, hey, I want to use your wine. I was like, no, but, well, I'm doing your wine and these things, I'm not going to do it anymore. Then they change over. So it's a lot of politics. Thank you for watching Where Hawaii Eats and thank you Chef Russell for doing the show. Thank, thank you. you for cooking for me. That was amazing. Uh, make sure you visit our local restaurants and support local.